In practice, I often find people that are freaking out about their MRI results that needn't be, and yet other people that aren't taking their findings seriously enough. So in this video, I go through a few things to look out for in an MRI or an MRI report so that you can understand a bit better what's going on in your body. First up, a warning. This is just basic information to help you understand what's going on so that you can ask smarter questions when you're talking to a professional about your MRI results. Don't use it to diagnose yourself or to decide on any treatment for your specific case. Right, now the handy thing about MRIs compared to x-rays is that you can see other things than bones, like your discs, nerves, muscles, and inflammation. In the lower back, we tend to see two main types of MRI views. One as if you were sliced right down the middle and looked at from one side, and one as if you were sliced horizontally in two and we looked at you from above. On the side one, you can see the big chunky weight-bearing part of the vertebra, the spinal canal, which looks white in the MRI images called T2 weighted, and the discs. If a disc bulges or herniates, we can often see it protrude into the spinal canal where the spinal cord is. And a disc bulge is bad, right? Well, yes, but this is where we run into what's probably the most common misconception. There's actually lots of space in the spinal canal and the nerves only take up a bit of that space. So if the disc bulge is small, it often won't have much effect on the nerves. In fact, if you look at the stats, depending on your age, half the world has a disc bulge and has no symptoms at all. So the significance of a disc bulge depends on a few things like the direction and the severity of the bulge. And what symptoms you're getting, which is a crucial part of diagnosis for disc problems. So let's have a closer look at the direction and severity of disc bulges, the kind of words that you might come across in an MRI report, and the type of symptoms you should be worried about. Firstly, a disc bulge is where the outer part of the disc bulges out a bit whereas a protrusion or a herniation is where the inner gel of the disc ruptures through the outer part and sticks out. Both can irritate the nerves. If it's a paracentral bulge or herniation, it's pushing more into the spinal canal, which has a bit more space. If it's a posterolateral bulge, it's going a bit more to one side where there's less room for the nerves and this can compress the nerve roots as they exit the spine at that level. So now let's have a look at the severity of the bulge or protrusion. Here's some words you might see in a report to indicate the severity. The lower ones are more serious, but just remember that these are just words that radiologists use to describe an image, so they can be a bit subjective. A disc bulge or herniation can cause some back pain by irritating local structures. When it irritates the nerve root though, coming out each side of the spine, the symptoms tend to be along the nerve path, like in the glutes, the thigh, the calf or the foot, or the arm and the hand if the disc protrusion is in the neck. A nerve that's irritated by a bulging or herniated disc can cause pain, but when the nerve starts to become more compressed, it can progressively cause pins and needles, numbness, muscle weakness, and eventually even bladder and bowel signs and symptoms if it's bad enough. Always get professional advice for your specific case, but if you ever get consistent numbness, or obvious muscle weakness, or bladder or bowel symptoms, always go straight to your doctor because the nerves are becoming severely compressed, and if you delay too long, the symptoms could become permanent. If the symptoms are more mild and intermittent, the disc bulge may very well just heal by itself over a few or several months. As a disc protrusion heals, it often shrinks slightly, like a scab as it dries and heals, moving it away from the nerve. And cells called macrophages in the body can help to clean up disc debris. As long as you're careful not to damage the disc further in the first few months especially, it can become quite strong again. In many cases, a mildly bulging disc can just be an incidental finding, and any back pain or sciatica that you have, or arm pain if it's a disc in your neck, may be from something else entirely, like referred pain from your spinal joints or your muscles. Or the nerve irritation might be coming from other areas of the body, 
like thoracic outlet syndrome causing arm pain or piriformis syndrome causing sciatica. These kinds of problems can respond well to things like chiropractic, physiotherapy or exercises. Now, if I haven't mentioned something yet from your MRI report, here's a few other common terms that you might find in a report and what they mean. Rightio, there you go, I hope that helps. It's a bit hard to cover every case scenario in one short video, but hopefully it shines a bit of a light on the subject for you. Uh, if you did like the video, please consider liking and subscribing because it always really helps. Okay, cheers.